Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Jerry and I'm hailing you from the Antares Shipyard. And today we're going to be taking a look at a re-review uh, of the IKS Rotaran from Wave 19. Um, if you don't know, the Rotaran is Martok's flagship, kind of midway through the end of the Dominion War. Um, it was a Burrell class, um, so it was interesting to see a general on such a small ship, but um, he definitely served it well. Um, so the IKS Rotaran is a Burrell 4133 tech weapon crew crew got your standard cloaking action bar. Uh, action, perform a second maneuver on your maneuver dial with a speed of 1 or 2. Place an auxiliary power token beside your ship. You cannot attack this round. Okay, so for a Burrell class, the first half of this ability is actually pretty nice. Um, being able to move and do that little extra movement um, is great. And you know, if we were to go back and redo this card, um, I might even leave the auxiliary power token cost in there. What I wouldn't leave is the you cannot attack this round. And the reason why I wouldn't leave that is because there are so many other cards in the game that already do this exact thing, but you do not pay the penalty of not being able to attack. So there's really not, um, I don't think there's a stable footing to keep that wording in there. And of course, it's got a pretty good dial with the only red coming as a three cone bell, a forward 90 and a rear 90 degree firing arc. Uh, you've got the Burrell class itself, the generic, which got recosted um, thanks to, I believe it was the Ferengi faction pack that first recosted it. Uh, but those are down to 13, so they're fairly um, inexpensive, especially for the swarm fleets that you want to build. Still with four attack dice, one three, lose a shield. Um, with this, you're losing a tech slot. Um, but you still got the action bar of a cloaked ship. Now, we've got a Captain Martok, skill 7, elite talent slot, cost of 4. All of your Klingon upgrades cost 1, or minus 1 SP. Already fantastic start. I love discount cards, um, especially those that don't give a large discount, but give a overall discount, like this one gives all of your Klingon upgrades minus 1, versus um, all of your weapon upgrades get minus 2, or, you know, things like that. So I, I really prefer this method of cost saving. Uh, action. When attacking this round, during the roll attack dice step, you may roll two less attack dice to add one hit result to your roll. If you only have Klingon cards on your ship, roll one less attack die instead of two. Now, I do like this ability. It is an action, so you kind of have to get a little bit of action economy going. Um, <clears throat> And you kind of have to find another way to get tokens placed next to your ship for that quality. But essentially, if you put Martok on a Klingon ship with all Klingon upgrades, you get to add a hit result minus one to your attack die roll. So I think his him as a captain overall is very Klingon-like. I actually like it. It's very thematic. And I think he's a good, he's probably one of those low-tier good captains. Um, you don't see a lot of people play with him because there are other Martoks that are a little bit better, but I do see situations where he could come into play. Uh, you just got a generic Klingon Captain, skill 1, cost of 0. And then we've got an elite talent here, Supreme Commander, cost of 5. Action, discard this card to target one friendly ship within range 1 to 3. The target ship immediately performs a free action from its action bar. If that target ship is a Klingon ship, it may perform any action as a free action. So Supreme Commander is great, and it acts like the Admiral Galron card, just the, kind of the second half of it, um, which I, doesn't cost five. That's my only issue here. Um, it is an action, so again, sucking up that action economy. Um, so you really don't want to have Supreme Commander and Martok on the same ship, because what are you going to do? You can't, you can't choose which action you want to take. Or you're going to have to pick and choose which action to do. Um, and I don't like putting myself in that predicament. But um, Supreme Commander is a pretty good card. I would re definitely recost it. Um, we're talking 3-4-ish area. Um, probably my gut says 4 SP instead of 5. Um, the, other, the other factor in that, like, you know what? Changed my mind. It is a 3 SP card because of the discard. Galron doesn't discard himself to do this. Um, so losing this as a discard is kind of a disservice. Um, next elite talent is the day. The day is ours. Uh, 
Cost of four. During the roll attack dice step, you may discard this card to add one crit result to your roll. This card may only be purchased for a Klingon captain assigned to a Klingon ship. Again, it's we're talking about a discard that does one thing, and it's at a cost of four. Um, I would probably bring this down to like a cost of three, um, but there are other Klingon cards that do this a little bit better. Um, thinking in Garen, Dra uh, Drax is another one where it allows you to convert one of your battle station results into a crit. Um, but then it also converts all the others into hits. I mean, you know, the, those cards cost uh, four or five. Don't remember off the top of my head. So it's kind of where I'm basing the recost off of. Um, so I'm saying three for a discard to get that crit would be okay. The next elite talent is alert status one. Action, discard this card to place a battle station token beside your ship. You cannot perform a battle station action as a free action this round. So I do not like um, the wording on this card. It definitely needs to be revisited and redone completely. Um, just because there are other ways to get battle stations on Klingons now. Um, Admiral uh, Galron is probably one of the better ways. Captain Galron is another way. Um, there is a wharf out there that does it. Um, if I'm remembering right. I may not, I may not be remembering um, the exact word verbiage off the top of my head. But um, the fact is that there's other ways to do this. And then we've got Photon Torpedoes, so attack, target lock, so you got to have a target lock to attack. Spend your target lock and place three time tokens on this card to perform this attack. You may convert one battle station result into one crit result. So these are the standard Photon Torpedoes that we used to see in the older packs, um, just with the time token flavoring coming onto them at cost of five. Pretty expensive for the time. Um, there's a new card out there that kind of helps that, but uh, we'll leave that off for another day. And then we've got our first crew. It is Jadzia Dax, a Federation crew in this Klingon pack. Um, so you do not pay a faction penalty when assigning this card to a Klingon ship. I already like it. Uh, you may disable this card and spend your scan token to convert one of your battle station result into an hit or an evade result. Um, probably, probably too expensive for a five-point card. I lean more towards three, four on this one. Um, Probably more towards a three, just because there are again newer cards kind of have kind of have defined the new costings for some of these abilities. Um, you disable this, so you're paying the cost of disabling, but you get to use your scan, which scan has become more prevalent in the meta these days, uh, thanks to the newer faction packs. Um, so I think I, I lean more towards three for her. Um, the next crew is Tavana. Action, disable this card to repair one shield token. In addition, if your ship is cloaked, you may repair one damage to your hull. You roll minus two attack dice on all of your attacks this round. Um, Tivana, again, not my favorite card to use. It's an action, and then you disable. Um, cost of five, very expensive for what she does. And then you get the added uh, detriment of minus two attack dice. Not the strongest card in the pack. Definitely not one that I, I typically reach for. Um... I don't know if I've ever actually played it. So just food for thought there. There's other ways to repair um, that are much cheaper than her. Uh, next crew is Cornyn. Action, discard this card to acquire a target lock on a ship within range 1 to 3 of your ship. And then perform an action from your action bar. Not a target lock as a free action. Okay. I do kind of like Cornyn's card here. Again, it's an action discard, which I'm not a big fan of. And then it's five points, so I'm not a big fan of discarding cards that are worth five points. Um, the fact that you can grab a target lock and then do another action as a free action is great. Um, again, there are other cards that do exactly this um, that are much cheaper. And then the next crew in the pack is Leskit. After you reveal a red maneuver, before you move, you may discard this card to treat the maneuver as a green maneuver. If your ship is cloaked when you do this, you may immediately perform a sensor echo action as a free action. There we go. That's that's much more like it. That's more my cup of tea there. Cost of three, um, which is a discard. That's okay. Um, but you get to do another sensor echo action at the cost of less kit, the cost of three. Um, but I, I think that's, that's a good trade-off to have. And then you've got a uh, crew wharf. Uh, Klingon card, cost of two. 
Increase your captain skill by plus one or plus three for a captain this or for a Klingon captain. This ability cannot be used on this card. If your captain is disabled, discarded, or affected by a critical damage card, treat this card as your captain card with a skill of five. If your captain becomes non-disabled or unaffected by the critical damage card, the ca that captain card is restored. So we've seen this, these types of cards in other packs. Um, William T. Riker is one that comes to mind. I know there's a Romulan version. I think there is, well, you got Damar, who's kind of a, a Dominion version now. Um, but cost of two, increasing Klingon uh, captain skills up to three. This is a great card. This is a good card. This is one of the better wharfs out there. It's not the top tier wharf, but it is in the tier below. So it's a good wharf. Don't rule it out. Uh, you pair it with the Martok from this ship. You've got all of a sudden you've got a ten uh, captain skill ten Martok. All right, and then let's take a look at the mission that came with this ship, uh, with this pack. It is a Soldiers of the Empire, which is Klingon and Dominion flavored. Uh, number of players is two. You need an objective token and three mission tokens to play this. Uh, mission overview: While patrolling the Cardassian border, the IKS Bamoth was attacked and disabled by a Jemadar, and has drifted across the Cardassian border. General Martok has assumed command of the IKS Rotarin and has been given the mission of finding the missing Bamoth and rescuing any survivors. Setup. Klingon player, 40 SP, including one and only one Borel-class ship, which must be the IKS Rotarin, and must have Martok assigned as the captain. The Dominion player, including one and only one Dominion ship. Map setup. Place the objective token directly in the center of the play area. This represents the disabled Bamoth. Place three mission tokens on the objective token and place the, the mission tokens in a stack besides the play area. Player then set it, sets up in a standard two-player game. So the special rules of the IKS Bemoth. The objective token represents the disabled IKS Bemoth. It cannot move, perform actions, or attack, and it cannot be affected by the Dominion ship. Treat this as if it was a ship if it was overlapped by another ship. Rescuing the crew of the Bemoth. If the IKS Rotarin is within range 1 to 2 of the objective token, it may perform the following action. Action. If your ship is not cloaked, disable all of your remaining shields to remove one mission token from besides the stack, besides the play area, and place it on top of your ship card. Each mission token represents one third of the crew of the IKS Bamoth. They are considered recovered when the mission token is placed on top of the IKS Rotarin ship card. They are considered record rescued when they are not on top of when they are on top of the IKS Retiring Ship card, when it exits the play area through its starting zone, through its starting area. Objectives. You win if you rescue the crew of the Bamoth, i.e. have three mission tokens on your ship card and exit the play area through your starting area. Alternatively, you win if you destroy the Dominion ship after you recover all of the Bamoth crew. You lose if you exit the play area on, if you exit the play area without all of the mission tokens on your ship card, or if you destroy the Dominion ship before recovering all of the Bamoth's crew. Uh, and then you got the Dominion player. You win if you destroy the IKS Retarin. So there are the mission cards. And that is everything from this pack. So I hope you enjoyed this re-review. Um, I know it was quick, and I apologize it was late getting out. I realized there were some recording issues. Um, hopefully this is fixed and a little bit better. Um, please let me know in the comments if you're still having a hard time hearing me. Um, also, let me know if you've played with the Rotaran. What are your some favorite war stories uh, using the Rotaran or any cards in this pack? Um, also, consider giving the channel a subscribe and hitting the thumbs button. Give us a like. Let us know that this is content you want to see. Um, but until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard.